Arthur Rashad here with you. Book Fatherless Son coming soon. This page right here, Road to Exoneration, where individuals come together, put their minds together in order to help people that have been wrong wrongfully convicted um, and don't have the money or are not being backed by Innocence Project or something like that. So the first case we're gonna look at is the case of Daniel Coleman. Full disclosure, that's my father, who was convicted February 21st, 1987 and I'll go into the facts of the case before I get started. Uh, follow me at ArthurRashad.com or on Facebook, Arthur Rashad Support Group for Children of Incarcerated Parents. So on the early morning of February 21st, 1987, a 22-year-old Caucasian woman was on Main Street in Wilmington, Delaware, attempting to withdraw money from an ATM. While she was attempting to withdraw money, a black male came up behind her, put a blunt object to her back, and ordered her to give him give him all of her money. Brief struggle, the male um, escorted her to the back of the bank in which he told the, the female that he intended to for her to give him a fellatio. At the same time, he changed his mind, took her back to the front of the bank, forced her into the vehicle, and made her drive around Main Street in Wilmington, Delaware. Around the corner on Cleveland Avenue at a pizza shop, the woman driving noticed that the pizza shop was open and looked like and it looked like people were inside of it. She hit the accelerator, jumped on a curb, jumped out of the vehicle screaming. Individuals inside of the pizza shop came out of the pizza shop to see a male uh, walking away. By this time, it was 4.30 a.m. When police showed up, they interviewed the victim and took the victim back around the corner to the ATM um, where she again explained uh, the events and everything that happened. An hour later at 5.30 a.m., Daniel Coleman, while walking to his place of employment, was stopped by police. Uh, the officer at the ATM took the victim from the from the ATM back to the McDonald's, where Daniel Coleman was being held for an investigatory detention to see if that was, in fact, the male that kidnapped her. She said at the time, this is not the male because he doesn't have a coat on, nor does he have the same facial hair. Daniel Coleman was, was let go from the detention. The female was escorted back to the police station to take a statement. Uh, around Later that day, around nine o'clock, the officers went back to the bank to view uh, surveillance of the incident. About an hour later, they showed up at Daniel Coleman's place of employment and alleged that he is the one that was seen inside of the photographs taken by the ATM. At that point, he was placed under arrest, taken back to the Newark Police Department and interrogated. Police alleged that he made three statements. The first statement was that he was at home, he was home during the time of the crime. Second statement was that he met the woman at the ATM and she agreed to have consensual sex that they had. And the third statement that they alleged happened was when they showed him the pictures that he admitted to the crime. Um, during the trial, they presented presented everything to the, to the courts. He went to trial, lost trial, and subsequently uh, received two life sentences plus five years. Life sentences, uh, so there was two life sentences, uh, first degree robbery charge and a third degree sexual assault charge. He served 28 years in prison. So those are the facts of the case coming from the government side. Next week, we'll have the facts of the case coming from Daniel Coleman's side, which his, which his side was. And then the following week, we'll dive into what we did with starting at the original police report. Again, Arthur Rashad, the book Fatherless Son coming soon. Just a bunch of people coming together, using our minds and not our pocketbooks to help people that may have been wrongfully convicted. So if you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you want to like the page, like the page. It's on you. I don't like when people tell me what to do, so I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, thanks a lot for checking it out. I'll see you next week. Have a good one. Love yourself. Love others.